Evolution is a battleground, the survival of the fittest, a constant, ruthless struggle for resources and reproduction. But there was something that even Darwin couldn't explain, a problem left for others to solve, altruism. Darwin said if you could find a case where um, an organism did something solely for the sake of the good, you know, good of another organism, then this would annihilate my theory. Worker bees seem to deny Darwin's theory. They're like kamikazes. To protect the hive, they will sting, even though it costs them their own life. How can such behavior evolve in a world that is shaped by natural selection? This was biology's greatest paradox, and it took another genius to solve the puzzle. Evolutionary biologist Bill Hamilton could see a realm that Darwin couldn't even imagine. Darwin's basic argument seemed to show a very selfish living world, and yet this didn't seem to be what one saw around, so he felt one needed a, a middle path. In 1964, Bill Hamilton discovered that altruistic behavior can be explained if one looks beyond the individual and takes a gene's eye view of nature. He saw that from the point of view of genes, it didn't really matter much if one individual lived or died because a copy of the same genes lived on in all the other individuals that it was related to. The essence of Bill Hamilton's theory was that when we think about natural selection, we have to think at the gene level rather than just at the individual level. The individual is the machine or vehicle which carries the genes about. Darwin himself was worried about bees and other social insects, how it was that the adaptations shown by worker bees and worker ants, which are after all sterile, could get passed on through the generations. Hamilton was the first to realize that the explanation lies in the unique genetic makeup of insect communities. Sterile workers who are female are extra specially closely related to their younger sisters who are going to be reproductive young queens. So when a worker ant or bee looks at a young queen who is her sister, that young queen is almost an identical twin to her. For the workers, it makes more genetic sense to devote their lives to the young queens than to reproduce themselves. They can give up their own future because it is already contained within someone else. That's the essence of the Hamilton theory. Genes working through one individual are looking after copies of themselves in other individuals. It took decades for his ideas to be universally recognized. In 1993, he was awarded the Kyoto Prize, after the Nobel, the most prestigious accolade in science. Bill Hamilton took Darwinian thinking into a new dimension, one that the rest of the scientific world is only just catching up with. But sadly, his life was cut short while he was pursuing yet more answers. Hamilton was fearless, both in life and in science. He was prepared to pursue ideas that upset the scientific establishment. As an evolutionist, he was concerned that sudden changes brought about by modern medicine could interfere with the flow of evolution with devastating consequences. And that is what took him on his last journey into the Congo on a search for the origin of AIDS. He was investigating claims that a polio vaccine cultured in monkey tissues may have allowed the virus to cross species. Bill Hamilton died on the 7th of March 2000, 
from complications following a bout of cerebral malaria. The man is gone, but his ideas will influence science for years to come. <laughs>